was a reminder for myself and Abdul Ajisu, Da'ifu, Miskeen, Uzar, and Mujahidin, but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah that the holy month of Ramadan is approaching and Allah inshaAllah give us a life to see the immensity of that month, the month of immense power, qudra, Divine delights in which Allah completes His favours upon His creation. All the months of practices, all the blessings of Rajab, all the blessings of Shabban, Allah dress it with its light of Ramadan inshaAllah and alhamdulillah somebody had contacted for further information about fasting from the senses. That we've talked many times on, on fasting of the reality of fasting and Hudan al-Muttaqeen that Allah at the beginning of Qur'an alif lam mim dhalik al-kitab al fi fahudan al-Muttaqeen that from all the secrets of alif lam mim and the whole conveyance of realities from Izzatullah to the lamb and the lisan and the tongue of truth which Allah clarifies in this oceans of muhit of immensity in which everything and all encompassed within the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah wasallam. ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه that verily this book there is no crookedness and that's why we established in the nights before that look how a society where everything is crooked, everything is a lie, everything from Santa Claus to its bunnies, its trees and everything around us, it's just all crookedness and all lies. And Allah for these last days understanding how important that you're surrounded by crookedness but verily this book has absolutely nothing of crookedness, it's pure of pure the haqq and the truth of all truth. And it's a guidance for mutaqeen, uh, it's a guidance of light, of reality but that's a guidance for everyone. But Allah is then describing and bringing our attention that the, this reality of huda and this reality of a light and guidance into the heart that we have to study for mutaqeen whom their level of taqwa and their level of consciousness in Allah is not at just one but Allah has trained them. Prophet has trained them, dedicated to them that all their senses are being trained. And the highest training is the siyam and the fast. So, mutaqeen. From beginning of Holy Qur'an Allah is describing for us after the immensity of Surat Al-Fatiha in which all Qur'an, all realities, everything is dressed in Surat Al-Fatiha. Then we begin with Holy Qur'an and Allah then clarifying this immensity of Alif Lam Mim that in the end follow these mutaqeen and they teach the reality of the fast from all senses. So that when people are inspired to come to the tariqah, Mawlana Shah Naqshband, Allah first describing throughout Holy Qur'an is that the believer to lower their gaze. So it means that the immensity of the importance of the eyes and the reality of the eyes. And awliyaullah come from every isharat of Qur'an and like it's a a seed that is going to blossom, Allah blossoms Holy Qur'an, every ayat of Qur'an that Allah brings is like seeds of realities. He placed into the heart of these awliyaullah which include from the holy companions, the holy Ahlul Bayt, they're all awliya. All the way down to the awliya of today, they're taking these holy seeds into their soul and Allah blossoms its reality. And they become blooming like trees giving fruit of the immensity from one word, one letter of Holy Qur'an how much it can be expanded. And when Allah drawing attention to them to lower your gaze, then the turuqs came as the paths of perfection, istiqamu fi tariqat. 
where Allah described in Surat Al-Jinn, keep firm to your tariqah because the tariqah here to bring you towards your amanat and the trust in which you promised Allah in the heavens before He put you into your physical body, you promised Allah So tariqahs are here to fulfill our covenant with Allah From that reality of the eyes Mawlana Shah Naqshaban is bringing nazar bar qadam that the 11 principles of Naqshbandiya on the website nurmuhammad.com you can go to the 11 principles of Mawlana Shah Naqshband means the, the essence of the tariqah and nazar bar qadam is giving to us keep your eyes on your qadam on your feet because lowering the gaze and the immensity of the reality so then awliya come and now begin to expand that this nazar bar qadam they're teaching us that these eyes are the reality of hawa. Your eyes <coughs> are the reality of your dunya desire. And if you leave it unchecked and you don't ever fast with your eyes, as much as your eyes see as much as your dunya will be increasing. Your desire for material life is all related to your eyes. And I know we've talked probably many times on these subjects but apparently they can't find it for the Ramadan book because they keep changing the YouTube titles to match you know more clickbait type of titles. So they can't find the content and not labeling the content correctly. But tariqah is based on this reality of these eyes and that every hawa and desire is related to the eyes. As much as the eyes see, as much as the dunya desire is increasing. So th this is a window to the soul. <clears throat> we have then who's guarding and who's destroying it. Allah wants us to guard your eyes because it's the window for your soul. So imagine all day long you, you're throwing mud on the window, mud on the window, mud on the window, your heart becomes blackened and there's no light coming to the soul. For us to have an analogy when you say the window of the soul means what comes to the eyes will reflect onto the soul. When we know that the positive for malakut is Allah won't keep your eyes pure because all of the lights and reflections will be reflecting onto your soul. Later that opens up spiritual power that awliyaullah whom they have an immensity of light, their eyes have an immense amount of spiritual light coming out and they don't even have to open their eyes, they can keep their eyes closed and the lights from their eyes are coming out. We we'll go from Malakut down to dunya. From the right eye is Bahrul Hayat that Allah has dressed them, Quratul Ain, Jatul Hassani wal Husayn that this nur that comes from them, the right eye is nur and the left eye is high. So Rahman and Rahim. Right eye Sifat al-Rahman, left eye Sifat al-Rahim, right eye Imam al-Hasan, left eye Imam al Hussein. They inherit from Atiullah, Atiya Rasul, Ulul Amri Minkum that what Prophet gave to his, his family of Ulul Amr of the reality of their soul what Allah has partitioned. The immensity of light that comes from the right eye is what Allah wants us to inherit from the eyes of Prophet coming to the eyes of his, his beloved descendants, coming to the eyes of Sahabi Kiram and then coming to the population. The Prophet wants for us to inherit Sifat al-Rahman. When we say, Bismillahir Rahman al-Raheem. The rahmah and the mercy and the light that comes out from the eye. 
that what type of a nur that comes out from that eye that dressing people, blessing people. Allah when He's asking for us, lower your gaze is because one, the malakut is what type of immense lights Allah want to dress in Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. When we say Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, that all of Holy Qur'an is in Fatiha, all of Fatiha is in Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Just by saying Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, the light of the right eye has a nur that comes out. And this is a light from the paradise that has no end from Allah's Divinely power. It's not something that diminishes, it's not something <coughs> that, that goes down in its power. But Allah's infinite oceans of power begin to dress the right eye of the servant with this light of, of rahmah and immense mercy. This light is of the lights of paradise that when the believer watch for the believer because they see with the light of Allah and they reflect from this holy hadith when Allah says, you came, you did all your fad, now you're approaching with voluntary worship. These are all these ayahs and hadith and teachings of awliyaullah, how they all come together are be the seeing in which you see. So when Allah is going to dress from His seeing, He's going to dress the servant with Rahman and Raheem and this Rahman is going to dress with the lights of mercy. From the rahim to the noon and this nur that begin to come from their eyes. The one whom their light is deficient, it's enough for the believer to look at them, eyes closed, eyes open and begin to convey a light. And many people have an experience through watching the videos of the shaykh that they saw a light come from his eye and come into their eyes and their heart. Because the shaykh's image is the same as his personality, doesn't matter you saw his photo and this happened to you, you saw his video and it happened to you because his soul is behind that image. If you draw the shaykh's face, no and that's why they don't like drawings and, and they don't even like what the drawings look like. So better to never draw the image of a shaykh because you portray him in, in something funny looking and that can be insulting. It's best to only use a photograph of the shaykhs because this is what Allah created, the other is what you're making with your hands. What Allah has created, there's a reality of the soul behind that image. So when they're looking for malakut, this Rahman and this nur begin to dress. Mawlana Shah Naqshban's qudra is so powerful that from his eye he will feel seven or four paradises of souls that their lights were deficient and as a result his nazar bar qadam was not to use it in dunya, not to send the light to people everywhere you go, stare into their face, fill them with light and they go and lose it the, the next day doing horrible things and looking on the internet and looking at all sort of forbidden things. But they keep this light for yawmul mashal in which Allah will allow them to bring that light and that reality out. Shaykhs are able to bring that light out in every association, that from their soul is attending the association and from their right eye goes a light out to whoever's watching, present, past, future, it doesn't make a difference between time because light has no time. The moment the light is flowing in these associations, it's not based on eight o'clock, there's no time for that light that came out. You watch this five years ago, ten years from now, a hundred years from now, makes no difference. It's uh, no expiration date, um. right? Isn't that like a fish that it go bad after a week? This is from the heavens. So this light has no time, it immediately come out and begin to dress anybody who's looking at it. That's why Hizb shaitan they can't watch the videos, they can only make very bad comments based on the the thumbnail image, they never even watch it, they just oh there's, 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 there's Hindu people that like do all these horrible comments because the Hizb shaitan they can't take the light of what's being emitted. So this is why Allah said, lowering your gaze, why? Because we take from what Allah gave to Prophet and what Prophet gave to holy companions, Ahlul Bayt and awliyaullah, there are 
our guidepost of what we should be achieving in life. So they describe that this light of Rahman comes out and a nur that begin to dress. So the, the siyam and the fasting for the believer is guard your eyesight. Not only for Ramadan, tariqah comes and it takes all of these trainings into the training of the khawas and the elite that at every moment guard your eyes. Men and women, you don't have to look at only nakedness to lose your eye but you look at dunya. So now look how shaitan is coming after the eye, 10,000 cars, 10,000 models, 10,000 places, 10,000 images. Anything that can attract your attention, it doesn't have to be haram because you could say, no I'm looking to, to halal things. Women are looking at other women and they have too much makeup, they have too much expression, too much this, too much jewelry, too much… Whatever it is of a dunya, it's feeding the eye. This doesn't have to be haram, this is not something about haram. But anything that shaitan wants us to indulge in, to look at and keep looking at and that's why now his systems have gotten so advanced that when you look before at a picture and you paused and changed. Now TikTok doesn't even allow you to pause, it just feeds through one, two, three, four, five, six. So you see these kids are sitting there for hours just because it's one video after another video, after another video, after another video, after another video. Because shaitan is feeding them and they have an insatiable appetite. He knows he's feeding them from haram to not haram and whatever it is, he's feeding the eyes. Why? So that they don't become from Sifat al-Rahman because the eye that is, is keeping itself fasting and the reality of fasting is abstaining when you abstain your body is purifying. When you're not abstaining you are absorbing, you are consuming and eating. So you're eating through your eye. So what does it make a difference between the eye, the belly or any other part of the essential organs, the ears, the breath, there's no difference. They all eat but in a different way. So the one who eat too much, we'll talk about later the power of the stomach and what's happening in the stomach. But what Allah wants is the pure eye to be dressed from Sifat al-Rahman and Divinely Lights, these Divinely Lights to come out and to conquer all negativity. Shaitan wants to feed the eye from every type of vision so that the heart becomes darkened, the heart becomes blocked and that's why the, the dajjal and his covering of his eye. That I want to give you from my eye that the life of dunya, the love of dunya but I have no nur to give you, I have no light to give you. So means shaitan comes to take away the light of Rahman from the eye. So you can see how intense by technology how close we are to the last day. He's feeding the eye so fast it's harder and harder to clean. Impossible for people to reach a reality in which their eyes are so immersed in, in visions and pictures and images that you can't even sit to meditate in tafakkur because you're just going through all the pictures. Pictures, it could be ladies going through thousand different styles and, and images and as soon as you sit to meditate you can't say, Shaykh I can't meditate. I know why you can't meditate because your eye filled up with so much data. It's like a phone, you have maybe 10,000 images and your phone begins to slow down. But unfortunately this technology is the heart and the more images we put in, the darker the heart is becoming, the more suppressed the heart is becoming. So the reality of fasting with the eyes is, that is to abstain as much as possible to keep our nazar on our feet and to the reality of the feet is the qadam, is that my path, Ya Rabbi keep my eyes on my path, that keep my eyes on what's important for me to reach of these realities. 
that keep my eye on Madinatul Munawwara, keep my eye on, on this holy soul, keep my eye on my practices. And then they teach how to whoosh these desires is that when you enter into the shower you have to step with your right foot into the shower, left foot into the bathroom, right foot into the shower. Don't email us that we made wudu wrong and we checked it, nobody's talking about. No, the bathroom you go left foot but the shower is a holy sanctuary. You don't lose your bodily functions in the shower, you're going to have like a ghusl of death. The Ya Rabbi when I enter in this shower wash me like the dead bodies are washed of all my bad character, everything that my eye and my body has has, has been dressed by from shaitan, wash it to be away, you step into the shower with the right foot. And when you sit under the water of the shower, you close your eyes and see your soul is moving. And you ask, Ya Rabbi let my soul to come out and to push away all of the filth of what has been put upon me and is attempting to be put upon my heart. And you spend five, six, seven minutes just washing away all this badness and all these bad visions and everything that the eye has seen. So that you're, you keep yourself in a state of wudu, not only you make wudu on the outer body but when you make your ghusl that the wudu of your soul that, Ya Rabbi wash this away from me, wash all of these contaminants and anything that I have seen, wash it away and keep my heart to be pure. And shaitan's purpose then is to attack that eye, make sure that everything that is coming to that eye to be of a download of negativity and begin to darken the heart. The left eye, Sifat al Rahim is the oceans of Al Hayat, the oceans of eternity. So it means that from your left eye what they want us to inherit is the oceans of Hayat. That they come across the servant and they revitalize the dead. And that's why the fish came to life in the presence of Sayyidina Khidr and Nabi Musa salam. When he said, I want a sign from one of these servants of Allah it's Nabi Musa's dead fish for lunch put on a rock next to a stream, the fish came to life in Qur'an. This is not the hocus pocus of shaykhs. Holy Qur'an the fish came alive and jumped into the river and Allah described it with ajeeb. And that reality of these servants is that the dead come to life. They can bring the dead to life, not the one who already went to Allah but is with Allah he doesn't need to come back here. But the one whom feel they have no hope, that they have darkened their souls so much the shaitan made them to feel that they have no hope. But Allah through a light in the eye of that servant begins to emanate Bahrul Hayat. See Bahrul Hayat come out and Hay. So Rahim has Hay within it. This under the authority of Imam al Husayn as salam. Rahman is under the authority of Imam al Hasan as salam. And that's why the love of Imam al Hasan what Imam al Husayn Allah described is to give me fi dunya hasanat wa akhira hasanat wa kin adhab al nar is the Ya Rabbi give me from the goodness of Imam al Hasan and Imam al Husayn because that means little Hasan. That keep me in their company, keep me under their love, keep me under their dress. When you love them, that's the secret of love. When you don't try to put with your mind who's important and who's not important, love, love becomes free. When you love them especially the family of Sayyidina Muhammad we have no understanding of what Allah has dressed them. As much as we talk can fill books and books and books and still we have no understanding of what their reality is. But we know that they inherit from the oceans of generosity, love and compassion. That by just loving these Ahlul Bayt, that's why Allah makes a test for everyone, makes all these stories and all these schisms and all these groups that are breaking in paths, makes it difficult for people to follow the reality, is a test. If someone says, this is Shia, this is this, 
So I don't know what you're calling it, this is the family of Sayyidina Muhammad and it's my duty and obligation to love them. And when you pass all the fitna and all the fasad, we don't know the reality of what one act of love towards them will be dressing us by. Imagine bringing a cake for Imam al Hassan and he dress you and intercede for you that Sifat al-Rahman to bless your eyes. And wherever you go this light comes, it's not from shaykhs or from tariqahs because some people say this is from shaykh so and so, big shaykh, this from shaykh so and so. No, no, this is from Imam al Hasan. If he gives you from his right eye light will come from Surah from Sifat al Rahman. When you say Bismillahir Rahman, light will begin to emanate from your eye. They are the owners. So then awliya said, oh we're from Jatt al-Hassani wal Husayni because they're inheriting from this Jatt. That's important, not he came from that wali. That wali was not the source of that reality, he came from these two big family members. They inherit from their Jatt, from their descendancy. So this Sifat and the reality of the right eye is with Imam al-Hasan salam. Left eye? Sayyid al-Shuhada who's the master of witnessing and the master of how he died upon this earth, what Allah gave is the keys of al-Hayat. That the ocean of eternity, the oceans of immense reality, Salamun qawlun min Rabbil Raheem. That if in the heart of Prophet Surat al yaseen if your love is so perfect, so correct, that why Mawlana Shaykh said, even you should shed a tear from Imam al Hussein. Why? Because this key of Salamun Qawlun min Rabbil Raheem is with that one that you don't seem to be crying about. Shame on you that you didn't cry for the sound and the story of his death. Because imagine what he's carrying. He carries Salamun Qawlun min Rabbil Raheem. He is the Rabb and the Lord of Sifat al Raheem. He carries the oceans of Al Hayat because his name is Hussein and has the Ya within that. And the Ya of Yaqeen is in there in that reality. So, it means that this light in the left eye of oceans of Al Hayat, the servant then is being dressed from oceans of eternity. And these are the balanced lights of all realities that through their eyes they have the lights of paradises and the ocean of hayat from paradises and these are the paradise servants that carry these lights and these emanations wherever they go. Whoever looks at them, gaze upon them, attend their associations, they're being dressed by oceans of light from a rahman they're being dressed from the oceans of al-hayat from Sifat al-Raheem. And this is the immensity of saying, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, what Allah dresses of these lights upon them. And why shaitan blocking? Because he has no, no power of al-hayat. But if I talk about shaitan on this then they're going to make that as the cover of the video which is just has nothing to do with that. Yeah, don't distract this reality of the video with putting the jaw covers on. This has nothing to do with that. Shaitan's only purpose is to take away the reality of the light and this is the power of Ramadan, this is the power of fasting. When Allah say, okay you came one year you fasted Ramadan, mabruk. Now next year fast with all your senses. It's not only fasting with the mouth but complete the fast. Fast with the ears, fast with the eyes, tonight we're talking about fasting with the eyes so that Allah can complete His Ramadan favour upon you that you fasted these 30 days and that only I can give you the reward that I want to give you, I want to dress your light, your eyes with Al-Hayat, I want to dress your left eye with uh, Hayat, your right eye with Rahman, I want to complete my favours upon your, your my servant. So this is the immensity of these realities and always remember that tariqah comes and teaches azimah, not ruqs yeah the, the easy. When people are saying, why I wish we do like this, why we do like that, you, you don't have to do anything, you can do whatever you want. But the tariqah comes and teaches the most difficult 
and the highest reality so that we are always trying to achieve something. If you just teach kindergarten then people never leave kindergarten. But when we teach the college course, PhD courses, we have something that we should be aspiring for. Shaykh, no I don't think I can even do Ramadan, inshaAllah I'll give you strength. Don't worry about it, next time you'll understand how to fast with more senses and, and, and all of these understandings. We pray that Allah give us more and more understanding and, and the reality and the importance and the immensity of, of purifying the eyes.